Hi, in this video I'm going to explain to you one of the steps in the class for PHP uh, level 2. So in milestone 5 of this project we are trying to do a checkout. And so to do a checkout of a shopping cart you need to update two different tables. So you can see here we have the orders table. And if you look at my orders table you can see that there have been four times that people have checked out in my store and you can see which is my most favorite customer customer number six so I don't know who six is I would have to go look into the uh, users table to find out who he or she is so whoever this person is number six checked out on November 2nd and also again on November 30th so this is part of the checkout process is creating an order however you notice the orders table is very sparse it only contains three pieces of information. It tells me which order ID it is, tells me when the order was taken, and then who it was by. But it doesn't tell me how much the person bought, what products they were, how much it cost. So all of that has to come from somewhere else. So that uh, somewhere else is a second table. So when we do a checkout process with a cart, we are going to create items in two different tables. So the second table is the orders details table. In this, we have an item for each product that was purchased. Each row in the table represents an item. So you can see that the uh, order ID number 90 is the first order that was done by customer 6. So this was on November 2nd. So what was the order number 90? What did this person buy? Well, you can see that in the orders details table, there are three items that are listed as order number 90. So this is a two-step process when we create an order. First of all, we create an entry in the orders table. We use that ID number then in the second table, which is the orders ID key field. So what did this person buy? Well, we can see that they bought product number 1000, 1009, and 1011. Now once again, the only way I could know what these products are is to go look into the products table and look those up. We don't know what the description is, we don't know what the price is. We would have to go find that. What we do know is how much this person purchased. So quantity one, one, and four for these three items. So when you transform your uh, shopping cart into an order, you're going to create multiple lines in two different tables. Now let's take a look at how the process of the code would work to make this happen. So I'm going to have a class, I'm going to call it the order business service. And in there, there's going to be some kind of a checkout process or create order, or in this case, I've named it do order. So you're going to see that I'm going to do several things that are uh, what we would call an atomic transaction. We want to make them all happen at the same time. So first of all, we want to connect to the database and see if that's successful. If it is, then we are going to create a new order. And we are going to send that function to parameters. We're going to say, here's the connection to our database, and here is the cart. Now the reason why we pass on the connection to the database is because we want to keep the same connection open for this whole series of transactions. So where does that happen then? So create order then is going to be a function that is a part and uh, somewhere in that function is going to be the SQL statement that says insert order into the orders table. So when you insert an order you're going to give it the, uh, the uh, person's ID, the date and uh, that's probably it. So we create an order. Now when this is done the new line in the orders table is going to have an ID. An ID number is automatically generated by the database system. So you don't have to invent that. But it is returned with this, uh, this property called insert ID. So this function will return it. And we're going to save it in the order number over here on the left side. So now, after we create the first line in the orders table, we're going to create multiple lines in the order details table. So you can see that we're going to receive the connection again and probably the cart. And it looks like I forgot to put in here the uh, order number. So by this time we know which order number we're dealing with. Now, we want to then go through a for loop because the cart has a list of products that are in the cart. So for each item that's in the cart, 
we are going to insert a new row into the order details table. So we will insert a product ID, the quantity of things that we're going to buy, which product it is, and all that goes into order details. Now, assuming this all is successful and we have the number of rows affected is some number like, I think it was four in this case, then we return a successful message. Then in our code here in order business service, I want to check to see was the order inserted successfully and was the order details inserted successfully. If all of that checks out, then we will run the commit command. And if any of them fail, then we will do a rollback. So this is the atomic transaction idea. So when we get done, we are going to have the entire process look like this. We're going to have one row for the orders table. And then if there are multiple products in that order, we will have multiple rows in the order details table. So this green table is going to be a lot longer. Let's take a minute for uh, an example from real life. Let's go and search for Google for order invoice. And I'm going to search for images. And let's see what we get here. So let's pick this one here. This looks like a typical order invoice. And uh, we can see that we have a pretty good idea of what our form looks like. So let's, let's scroll through this website and see what they have. So here is a generic kind of an idea of what a purchase order looks like. So you can see that on our order we have a date and you might have some other fields in there about who purchased it and the rest of the stuff. But then there's a separate table that's contained inside that order. And this table at the bottom here corresponds to the items in the order details. So the details represents one row for how many items for each product. Let's see if they have another one. So here is another one that looks very similar. You can see the invoice here. It's got the same idea where we have uh, order number at the top, somewhere in the header, and the customer header is up there. And then once again, the table below shows the invoice of how many of each item was purchased. And so that's kind of what we're going for as the final product of our checkout is to create an invoice system that looks like this. So there's a lot of steps involved in getting this checkout process to work and you're no longer in the introduction to database stages when you get to this point. We have a somewhat complex uh, transaction going on here. But when you're done here, you'll have a cart and a checkout process that will generate orders. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, once again, check out the other videos that are in the class on this PHP uh, topic here and that'll help you get through the assignment here. So we're close to the end of the semester and I know you can do it. So let's uh, keep going together.